the radiation was 16 times above normal. I'm Ukrainian-American and I'm proud Ukrainian. Hashtag proud Ukrainian. Ukrainian political horror thrilling. How can I not touch my face when Ukrainian politicians provoke me to face palm? Hello world! This is Kyiv, not Kiev on the line. My name is Tatiana Hajduk, and somewhere far, far away from me, respecting social distancing, is Polina Boychuk. And today we're gonna tell you the top stories from Ukraine. So, we're still self-isolated, and I want to ask Tatiana, how is your quarantine? Oh, not bad, thanks. Uh, I, I actually, as a, a bit of an introversial person, I feel just fine spending time with books, guitars, uh, and... Uh, yeah. you, you are head of communications and... <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> it, it conflicts a bit with my job, but... <laughs> okay. uh, and I have a temperature and I fear that... Uh, oh, Jesus, you told me that. So how is it? Uh, that's better than yesterday, but still 37 something. So I do hope to see you next week, guys. I'm joking, of course, but so oh, am I. Okay, let's go down to news. Yeah. Well, well, you still can. <laughs> Seems like the quarantined world is all about flash mobs. Isolated people compete in creativity and the results sometimes are just stunning. Yeah, uh, my favorite uh, flash mob is the one with the recreation of works of art when people uh, gather the things and people and other people at home and uh, create, recreate some works of art. And uh, this is uh, the flash mob that was initiated by the Gaddy image and that's really impressive. Just have a look. Not bad. <laughs> Yeah, but um, coming back to the news, the most popular flash mob among Ukrainians, which has very negative effects, uh, is burning leaves and grass. This is the Ukrainian national tradition, not the best one. Yeah, th this, uh, that's not a tradition. I would say that this is a very, very bad habit. Agreed, agreed. And let, let me just briefly explain. In the spring and in the autumn, Ukrainians are cleaning up their yards, fields, roadsides, and all the leaves and grass left is just burnt. Sometimes it's even very hard to breathe in the evening because someone of your neighbors decided to clean up and to burn the leaves. And uh, I don't know how uh, and how come this sacred knowledge is uh, passed on from generation to generation and people do believe that burning grass uh, will make the new grass grow better and grow, I don't know, faster, but this is actually not true. That's no, it's not. And burning leaves goes along with other useful tips like bleaching trees with lime so that incest, uh, insects incest <laughs> so that the insects do not destroy the bark or trimming the tree branches under the trunk itself so that the crown grows well so kind of the idiotic advices dating back to the ukrainian soviet past i did i did bleach the tree <laughs> Okay. Uh, so I think that uh, each country has some uh, idiotic pieces of advice that pass on from generation to generation and we'll be very pleased to read uh, your comments on what uh, your uh, neighbors do silly in spring or water. <laughs> Tell us about We're happy to have silly neighbors, yeah. Yeah, that seems funny actually, but burning grass carries a, ter a terrible threat with it because the fire is likely to go out of control and it often provokes for uh, forest fires. Yeah. On April 4, because of uh, the human negligence and because of the silly tradition, such, uh, uh, was, uh, such fire broke out in uh, the um, restricted zone around Chernobyl and mm -hmm. almost uh, 100 get hectares were covered and because of that the radiation was 16 times above normal. Yeah, I've heard about that. And fortunately, outside of burning Chernobyl zone, uh, gamma radiation uh, levels 
didn't rise. And more than 100 firefighters, backed by the planes and helicopters, to extinguish the remaining place were deployed. Yeah, and uh, police have arrested the suspect, and uh, this appeared to be a 27-year-old man uh, who decided to gather uh, grass and rubbish in three places and just to burn it for fun. Even not a tradition, but just for fun. And now this man is going to be put in jail because he wanted to have some fun. So you should very yeah. funny. <laughs> not, not at all. Yeah. Okay, burning grass. It's not a tradition, it's a national problem. Devotion of Ukrainians to its ancestral customs even outweighs their fear to be fined. So the problem should be solved creatively. One of the regional agencies, the Smart uh, Environment Melnitsky, even hired a dog from the local landfill to tackle this problem. Can you imagine a dog? A dog named Goofy. And now, instead of a goofing around, uh, Goofy is the face of waste management education campaign. And Goofy reacts to burning grass immediately. Instead of barking in vain, he just called the police immediately. <laughs> whistleblower. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little whistleblower. <laughs> but, you know, that's better to call the police than firefighters. So. Uh, yeah. Despite everyone now is focused on pandemics and the issues, which is quite understandable, we should not forget about Russia's military aggression against Ukraine, about the war dragging on and about the Russian-backed separatists who are not isolated from Ukrainians. Yeah, uh, Tanya, I think that we should proceed with breaking myths around Ukraine and we should uh, break that myth uh, that uh, the Donbas conflict, the Donbas war is uh, frozen which is far frozen. For this week we've not seen you, as of April 3, Russian-backed separatists fired 70 times uh, at the positions of the Ukrainian troops. As for the civilian casualties, they also seem a usual thing for the Russian forces. As of uh, April 7, during one of the attacks, a car of the shooting group of one of the Ukrainian TV channels was damaged. The grenade that was dropped on purpose exploded a few meters far from the vehicle. Yeah, uh, hopefully no one was injured, but th that proves that this conflict is not frozen. No, it's not. Back to the healthcare situation. On April 3, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky signed a decree on the assistance to Italy in combating the pandemics. Yeah, and the next day, a team of 20 Ukrainian doctors that were chosen by the Ministry of Healthcare and the Ministry of Internal Affairs arrived in Italy in the region of, Tanya, help me. <laughs> Marke. Marke. Yes. Uh, Ukrainians gonna help and uh, share their experience and the, the, the doctors will be there for 14 days. Mm -hmm. In explaining the decision, President Zelensky said that there were two purposes of that decision. First, to assist Italy and uh, second, to equip our doctors with all the necessary uh, skills and knowledge when it would be in need when it picks in Ukraine. Yeah, and by the way, the peak of uh, the pandemics in Ukraine is expected for April 13-14, which is already the next week, so stay home. Do not go away, do not go out. And um, also, uh, in addition to uh, doctors' exchange, Ukraine delivered over five tons of disinfection to Italy. And uh, the ambassador of Italy to Ukraine expressed his gratitude for Ukraine's support. And uh, he said that Italians would never forget our assistance in such bad times. The countries support each other in such a difficult times. This is how Italians say uh, thank you. Dear Italian friends, simply uh <laughs> Now let us present to your attention Ukrainian political horror thriller, which is called Kill Bill, <laughs> starring Anton Polikov, Viktor Bondar, Olga Vasilevska, Smachyok Dmitro, Chorny, Alexander Dubinsky, and others. The plot revolves around a group of 
assassin MPs, minions of one well-known Ukrainian oligarch that proposed a record 16,000 amendments to a banking bill to kill it. 16,000! You better remind our audience that this is the bill which prevents uh, former owners of banks uh, declared insolvent from regaining their assets and uh, that is seen again, as against the interest of Igor Kolomoisky, a tycoon who used to co-own Ukraine's largest lender, Privat Bank, until it was nationalized in 2016. Yeah, exactly. Moreover, this bill is a part of the legislation needed for further cooperation with the IMF that opens the door to um, $8 billion IMF aid package needed to fight the economic fallout from the coronavirus pandemic. At the culmination of the film, the scariest part of this film is that the lack of cooperation with the IMF goes with the risks of default. Given that uh, 16,000 amendments to the bill are not intended to improve it, but just rather block, completely block the bill, because uh, voting on the amendments could take two, three months or even longer, we further delay cooperation with the IMF, and therefore the risk of default increases and the teaser trailer of this horror movie has already appeared on the new york times website citing reuters and you know i simply cannot mention here the star of the show the main protagonist or i would rather rather say uh, antagonist the MP Anton Polakov, uh, lawmaker slash terrorist, because this gentleman made 6,033 amendments to the law, now blackmailing the Ukrainian authorities, parliament in particular. He says that he's ready to withdraw his amendments. Withdraw. To withdraw amendments. Gosh, how can I not touch my face when Ukrainian politicians provoke me to face palm daily? So, Polakov is ready to withdraw his amendments if Parliament revises the landmark law uh, passed last week and uh, delays the medical reform, gives him a million dollars and a helicopter. Uh, that must be for another movie, but yeah, okay, just to <laughs> land market law revised and medical reform delayed. What a movie without the, the funny loser. That's a comedy, not a thriller. <laughs> what about the movie itself? Worst scene? Enjoy. <laughs> Lina, have you heard that on April 1st, the U.S. took the U.S. Census Day? And that is the first one in history to respond online or by phone. Really? You can just Google that and you will, you will find uh, this census to, to fill the information. Let me Google this. Oh, I found. But it says that the page is unavailable. Access denied. Yeah, yeah, probably because you're not there. You have to be in the United States to fill in the information. Uh, so, Americans should fill in some information about um, themselves. Uh, and one of the questions is about the race uh, or origin. So, we'll get an updated information of how many Ukrainians live in the uh, United States. I mean, Americans of Ukrainian origin. Can they really point to Ukrainian in the column? Yeah, yeah, and we, as well as the diaspora organizations, highly encourage them to do so, to show that we are pro-Ukrainians. What about another challenge, another challenge in this uh, honor? Hashtag proud Ukrainian. And that, another reason for Ukrainians living abroad to, to say, to, to claim that they are of the Ukrainian origin. How do Hmm. Great, great. All you need is um, to film a short video of yourselves saying something like, um, hello, my name is Dawn, I live in uh, New York, but uh, and my parents uh, are from Vinnytsia. I'm Ukrainian-American and I'm proud Ukrainian, hashtag proud Ukrainian. That, that, that's cool. And not only American Ukrainians, all the Ukrainians living abroad, be it in Canada, in Europe, or even in China. Yep. Don't uh, forget to put a hashtag, proud Ukrainian. And hashtag Kyiv, not Kyiv. <laughs> 
Okay, guys, thank you for watching us today. It was our pleasure to share the news from Ukraine with you. We hope you will join us the next week. And we hope to hear your feedback on this proud Ukrainian story because we would like to know how much of us are there. Yeah. That was Tetiana Hajduk and Polina Bychuk. Stay safe, stay kind, and remember the very, very important thing. Kyiv, not Kiev. And also <laughs> one more important thing. Hashtag proud Ukrainian. From Ukraine, with love. So, we improvised. Improvisation. <laughs> Improvisation. <laughs> I, I gotta no, measure no. my temperature. <laughs> <laughs>